Um, what is the measure and what type of facilities uh, participate? Sure. So the Healthcare Equality Index was started um, back in 2007. So we just celebrated our uh, decade of um, that. And it looks at a wide range of policies and practices that are we promote to um, largely hospitals, but other healthcare facilities uh, to um, promote LGBTQ inclusion. So we started out really focusing on some foundational policies, and that was to have a patient non-discrimination policy that is LGBTQ inclusive, to have an equal visitation policy, and to have an employment um, non-discrimination policy that is LGBT inclusive. So those are the, sort of the foundational policies. Those plus training um, on LGBTQ issues are the things that we really focused on for, for a very long time. But then over the years, we've been adding a lot of recommendations about other ways that and other best practices that hospitals and healthcare facilities can be inclusive. So that could be anything like, you know, um, creating a welcoming environment by making sure that you have uh, posters and things that are representative of the LGBT community, um, having transgender inclusive policies to make sure that staff know that they should be treating their transgender patients res with respect, using the proper names and pronouns, things like that, um, respecting people's privacy, uh, ways to engage with the LGBT community, you know, having a hospital support a local pride celebration, those kinds of things that, you know, we just, there's a whole range of best practices. We probably ask about 50 or 60 questions um, about different policies, practices that they can engage in and suggestions um, about how they, they can engage. And again, we mainly focus on hospitals, but we also have some uh, outpatient settings. So some frequent or uh, federally qualified health centers FQHCs. I was trying not to use the <laughs> acronym. Um, also, some Planned Parenthood affiliates uh, and some other outpatient settings like that. So, at the state level, we also um, look at things like some states have specific patient bill of rights, and sometimes those include sexual orientation and gender identity, uh, and sometimes they don't. Um, and you'd be surprised, some states, like New York actually, only include sexual orientation, but they don't include gender identity. So even though, you know, you think of New York City as having all these rights and benefits, the state law kind of prevails in terms of having um, a patient bill of rights that is not fully inclusive. Um, and then there's a lot of other things that happen, like uh, state insurance commissions sometimes have uh, some regulations that impact um, access to transgender health care and guarantee that access, whereas, um, and then some state uh, legislatures are promoting bills that try to take away rights. Um, and just recently in Pennsylvania, for example, we saw uh, the state uh, legislature try to take away uh, tr some transgender specific uh, rights for youth. Uh, so fortunately that failed, but we imagine they'll be coming back with it again.